All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 15th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. And I've said, I think yes, perhaps as recently as yesterday, I've said several times recently that I'm afraid that the, the morality of the United States and indeed the collective West, uh, Western, advanced Western civilization like the EU, <clears throat> it has become so decadent that it's actually worse than Sodom, perhaps, because the things that have become uh, the avant-garde, the cutting edge of the new sexuality is beyond anything the Bible describes about Sodom and Gomorrah as far as uh, the multi-confused genderism and the, and the uh, sexual exploitation of children, the recruiting of children, all this kind of stuff. that we see publicly enforced by the highest authorities in the nation, publicly using public funds to try to force, and coercive force, to try to force other nations to adopt the same wickedness that is destroying and corrupting America and the West. It's a cancer that's consuming all things. Beyond... Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm afraid. Now, I have, and this morning I was looking around, and none of the things I usually watch have put episodes out yet, and I saw Matt uh, Slick, or Matt Slick, wrong guy. Uh, let's see, what's the name here? <laughs> uh, Matt Walsh, Matt Walsh, uh, which I don't watch regularly once in a while. Uh, and uh, he generally has a gener uh, somewhat of a Roman Catholic uh, moral perspective, not a Roman Catholic uh, priesthood moral perspective. No. So uh, certainly we have much in common. Uh, whether he's born again, I don't know. I, I hope so. And if not, may God save him. See, you can have lots of things in common, lots of views in common, but does the Spirit of God dwell in you? Anyway... Uh, and I'm not in a position to, to know him. So, anyway, as I said, we have much in common, I suppose, about morality, and uh, the Roman Catholicism is, you know, like, is is not wrong on everything, just wrong on everything that's not biblical. But uh, this is a I haven't even watched the whole thing. I was so stunned by this. This is. A uh, clip, about a minute, starting at 7.15 on the time. Uh, we'll watch about a minute or less. The, syst the title of the video is, The System is Run by Perverts and Degenerates. Yeah, I, was, I remember a number of years ago uh, on Netflix, and I've since canceled Netflix because it was becoming unbearable. Uh, the, it, it was becoming a... A, a video service of gay films more than anything else. But they had the the notorious uh, series uh, House of Cards about uh, the 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 lust for power and everything else in the White House and how the the, the uh, family uh, the individuals involved uh, there was no children in the family. <clears throat> Uh, basically committed sex with everything they could get their hands on and resulted, uh, re exhorted, uh, resorted to things like murder against uh, political opponents and about everything else uh, in the lust to, to satisfy their desire for power. And the, what troubled me about that particularly is I saw all this and I had the nagging suspicion 
that Washington was actually worse than a house of cards. And now I find my, my hunch, my perception of things was, in fact, very much true. So this is a clip from Matt Walsh, episode 971. And make sure I mute my mic so you don't... Hilda was... The latest episode of RuPaul's Drag, Way, or Drag Race, in which Nancy Pelosi wandered onto stage to deliver a canned stump speech about the wonders of drag. Because these days, politicians actually have canned stump speeches about the wonders of drag. Well Sorry, but I've had to edit and patch the video. Uh, it seems that I got a no uh, the video was rejected and has been blocked because of a spurious claim of copyright violation by... Oh, let's see. RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars, number 705, copyright owners Viacom CBS and Calib DRM. Blocked in all territories. Uh, approximately 30 seconds worth of material. Now, it is perfectly legal under American copyright law to use... Uh, copyright material, small uh, amounts of copywritten material for educational uh, commentary and satire. And you, YouTube knows this. They don't care. But this is a way to suppress critical remarks about anything. Uh, Joel Osteen's church has done the same thing to me with commentary critical of the teaching of Joel Osteen. They have copyright claim. You show a clip and then comment on it. They claim copyright that is a violation of the law. That is deliberate suppression of speech. And not lawful because it's perfectly legal to use that. So they are uh, uh, acting in violation of the law when they do that. But they don't care, do they? They've accomplished their purpose. What is present in that short 30-second clip from Mel, uh, Matt Walsh's uh, channel? Interesting, that's on YouTube. The, the clip, I took it from his thing. And what's interesting in there is Nancy Pelosi appears and praises the drag queens and says their freedom of expression to do what they do is what America is all about. This is what America is all about, the freedom of expression, the expression of perversion and sin beyond Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, these things have been condemned by God for millennia. Going back to, let's see, 2500 B.C. approximately. So let's uh, take a look at Scripture and see what Scripture says about what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah and why God did that to Sodom and Gomorrah, at least one of the reasons why. So let's begin in the New Testament in the book of Jude. Uh, let's see. No, excuse me. Let's see. Let's begin in the book of Genesis, chapter 13. Now, this has to do with Abraham and Lot and the herds. They were so being so blessed by God that their herds were so prosperous that they could not graze the animals together. So uh, it was necessary for them to separate from each other in order to find adequate grazing land for their their sheep and this is what happened and so Abraham offered Lot the choice of his choice of the land to dwell in and here we pick this up in verse 10 of chapter 13 of Genesis and Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of the Jordan the Jordan River that it was uh well watered everywhere 
before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you go toward Zoar. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of the Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful before the Lord. Now, let's go back and look where this story picks up, where God uh, sends two angels into the city to see if things are as bad as they really are. In other words, some eyewitnesses. God requires at least two eyewitnesses before he uh, before capital punishment is executed. Yeah, and what happened was uh, the men of the city had a habit of raping strangers, and uh, the angels decided to sleep in the open. They were of the appearance of man. Angels can do that, uh, and the men of the city decided they were going to rape the angels. Bad plan. Of course, they didn't know they were angels. But even after they found out, even after the angels struck them blind, see, they were there also to save Lot, to deliver Lot, because Abraham had extracted a promise from God that he would not destroy the righteous with the wicked. Abraham knew it was coming. <laughs> so then after they had, they, they ended up having to physically drag, basically took them by the arm, Abraham, or a lot, and his wife and their two daughters, removed them from Sodom uh, and warned them, do not look back. The reason for that, I believe, was to look back is to be sorry you left which means that's what you want. They, and, uh, well, we'll see what happened to Lot's wife. But, see, if that was your life, if that was, or your happiness was in Sodom, well, <clears throat> that's not good. You identified with them, you got the re result that they got, too. Verse 24 of chapter 19. Then the Lord rained fire and uh, brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So he overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and all that grew on the ground. Cauterized the cancer, the moral cancer, lest it spread. Because we see today that people that practice these things are determined to spread it. They are not content with their vice but are in uh, uh, determined to recruit others into it, including children, especially children. Wickedness loves to defile things, especially things that are not corrupted. Innocent children, relatively innocent, but not absolutely, but children that, uh, you know, just, just to corrupt them. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. God's judgment fell on her. She shared, because probably she looked back and said, there, there, my house is back there. My stuff is back there. You know, Jesus warns us in the New Testament. He talks about uh, a day when it's necessary to flee. He says, do not go back to your house to get your cloak. Leave immediately. Do not try to get, save your possessions. Leave immediately. Well, remember uh, uh, Lot's wife kind of stuff. Don't go back. Flee. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord, and he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain, and saw, and behold, the smoke of the land went up like a, the smoke of a furnace. 
And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham, remembered his promise. This is sort of a, uh, a uh, return to the, the context here. Uh, uh, a flashback a bit, as you could say. And sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. God remembered the promises to Abraham and saved Lot and his two daughters. His wife was not saved because she did not obey instructions and look back. Look back. Probably in longing for what was there. God sees the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It wasn't just a, a chance glance over your shoulder, I don't think. I think she looked back with desire for her house and her possessions that were literally going up in smoke. And God was not pleased with that, especially after he strictly warned them not to do that. Now, let us go on to Jude, the New Testament. And we have some explanation of why this happened. A bit. Chapter 1, verse 5. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed those who did not believe. Who had no faith in God. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains of darkness under the, uh, for the judgment of the great day, the fallen angels that left their proper state. Uh, in the book of Genesis, it talks about angels uh, coming down and engaging in sexual relations and begetting children with uh, uh, with women. Um, seems odd, but if the Bible reveals something that's beyond our knowledge, we, how, on what basis do we say it's not true? And here we have Jude repeating that. Repeating a reference to that, that God has reserved them in chains for the great judgment. They're not free to roam about like the devil. As Verse 7, As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these. See, it was not just Sodom and Gomorrah, but the cities of the plain. In the approximate area of the Dead Sea. Today. Where there's a Dead Sea there today. Now this is a, a rift valley. So this is... The kind of area that strange things might happen in anyway. But uh, uh, fire and brimstone. Brimstone is burning sulfur. Brimstone is called brimstone because it occurs along the brim of volcanoes. It's sulfur. If you want to know what brimstone is. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh. In other words, this isn't normal sexual immorality like a man and a woman committing adultery or committing fornication. This is contrary to the design and purpose of the physical flesh contrary to God's uh, purpose in uh, sexual relations as far as uh, having the possibility at least of, uh, of reproduction. Not the only purpose of sex, but one of the important purposes because God's first commandment was to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And God made it fun and pleasurable. See, sex is God's idea. But sinners pervert all the good things God has made. It's wide sin. It's a perversion of what is. 
It's not something new and different. It's perverting God's purposes. Man does that all the time. Look at all the instruments of war. That's perverting God's purposes. Look at nuclear weapons. That's perverting God's purposes. For evil. <sighs> Having given themselves over, over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh. In other words, that which is not meant for each other. Are set forth as an example. Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Then he goes on. This is in the context of, of people in the church that are going the same way, not necessarily. Likewise, the, also these dreamers, talking about the people he's actually talking about in context, defile the flesh, reject authority, the authority of God especially, and speak evil of dignitaries, of, of uh, majestic uh, spiritual majesties. Not earthly dignitaries, but this is like... Uh, archangels that perhaps are fallen archangels but you, you, it's sort of like a, a Pentecostals and Charismatics sometimes just uh, what's the word trash talk the devil just trash talk the devil this is warning against doing that Even if the devil is an opponent of God, yet God had created him with great majesty. And it's God who will bring judgment on him. Well, actually, Christians will have a role in judging the evil spirits, too. That will be rather bad when you, the evil spirits that tormented and abused us have to appear before us. As judge, we are judging them with Christ. Oops. Anyway, so the, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities of the plain was not only for that, but like a magisterial uh, punishment government punishment, judicial punishment, it has both uh, of an effect of vengeance on the guilty and um, warning and education for others who might be tempted to do the same thing. The reason for biblical stoning was that, first of all, all the community had to take place in it. It wasn't done in a in a dark cave someplace behind behind closed doors. It was done by the community. They had to purge the evil, and it wasn't just to to make it cruel. It's that they each had to take their role in casting stones at the one who was guilty of a capital offense which required at least two eyewitnesses. And the penalty for perjury was to receive the punishment of the, of the party that, that was on trial. So if you f gave false testimony trying to get somebody uh, executed, for example, and it was revealed, guess who got executed? You. A deterrent for false testimony, too. The... <clears throat> But the idea is, it, it, uh, just like public hangings, it has an educational purpose, too. A purpose of warning. Don't do this or you will end up on the gallows. And we've completely deleted that from our system. Punishment uh, occurs by caging people. Uh, yeah, the, the, the prison system is utterly unbiblical and utterly evil. It doesn't come from the Bible at all. It's evil. And the banning of capital punishment is utterly evil, too, because God commands it. 
And the Pope in his arrogance saying it's not right, just like the Pope in his arrogance decided to to edit the Lord's Prayer because he didn't like it. Even though there's uh, it, it, it was always translated correctly. He just decided to change it because the Pope thinks he's greater than Christ. Of course, the Pope, or the Pope and his bishops and everything else, they are, they are routinely get caught in orgies. I don't know if the Pope does, but uh, <clears throat> I mean, there, this kind of stuff goes on in the Vatican all the time, and a lot of other places the, among the priesthood and the hierarchy. Homosexual uh, homosexuals dominate, according to Archbishop Viganu, the Roman Catholic Archbishop says is the, the Vatican's a homosexual mafia. Not my words, his. And he worked there for years, so I guess he was in a place to know. Anyway, the reason, one of the reasons for the dramatic judgment upon those cities, was well, just like cancer, you've got to cut it out. You've got to remove it, or it'll spread is sin must be restrained. And the public demonstration of God's vengeance and God's justice does provide a restraint. But in the United States today, in like Illinois, it seems the government is mostly intent on removing all punishments for evil and imposing punishments on the good. Yeah. So... Uh, so, is the United States, I mean, considering what we're doing here, uh, drag queens, the governments have been spending uh, taxpayers' dollars to promote drag queen story time in public libraries, promoting homosexuality and the acceptance of homosexuality, not just a tolerance, but the acceptance and the celebration of homosexuality in basically everything, from education down to the lowest grades. I'm sure that in preschool, if they, they'll get it in there too, uh, all the way up through the universities, in government, in, all the, in the military, in corporations. And as I mentioned, the Biden administration has been trying to coerce other countries passing laws that have laws against abortion or uh, uh, acts of homosexuality. Normally this would be semi-public acts because if you're in private, uh, generally it's not known. Most of the time people don't go looking to find this. It's when it occurs in public parks and public uh, restrooms and all these kind of places that it's public displays that generally draw attention. But this is the, uh, so in other words, the, the Biden administration has been doing everything it can with the power of the government, the federal government, to spread the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah globally into areas that are trying to keep it under control. And this is one of the reasons that, that Putin's such a bad guy, is that the Russian government, in fact, they just recently passed a law on this too, another law, has forbid, they haven't forbidden homosexuality per se, but they've forbidden the uh, propaganda. They've forget, forbidden the, uh, the attempts to spread this idea to people that are not homosexual. And people do become this. They're not born with it. Uh, I personally know of a case where a person that had several children suddenly discovered he was gay. Actually, he was probably recruited into that by somebody else. See, the problem with sin is once you give yourself over to it, it enslaves you. It enslaves you. It's like drugs. Once you submit yourself to it, you may find, uh, soon find yourself chained. Oh, I'll just try this. I just want to see what it's like. And the next thing you know, you're an addict. Oh, that won't happen to me. Yeah. But here we have 
Nancy Pelosi, the most powerful woman in Washington, beyond doubt, Kamala Harris is nothing. A, a vice president is simply a person whose one duty, other than casting a vote in the case of a tie in the Senate, and they can even give that a responsibility to somebody else, uh, whose one duty is to wait for the president to die. They don't have any official responsibilities other than those two things. They're sort of the president of the Senate. That's not a that's a not a powerful office at all. Anyway, that's uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi. Perhaps is the most powerful person in Washington D.C. Considering the power the Speaker of the House uh, wields, there's no comparable person in the Senate. The Speaker almost is the House of Representatives. So what she says pretty much goes. And she endorses saying drag queens are what America is all about. That kind of the freedom to express your perversion, your sin, your wickedness. And we all know that one of the principal things about drag queens that it's been emphasized is educating children into it, normalizing this behavior among children. That's what drag queen uh, story time is all about. Recruiting people to homosexuality. Drag queens are homosexuals. They're not heterosexuals that simply dress up weird, which is also a perversion in God's sight. See, it's a rejection of God's creative purposes. Men and women in this age are created both, they are both human beings. They are both called man together, male and female. In the image of God, he created and made man in his, own, in his own image. God made man in his own image. Male and female, he created them. So humanity is one, but is composed of two genders with distinct roles not any less than human, but both human beings that are supposed to have all the dignity of God, the glory of God, but with two separate roles. Man and woman. And when you deny God's purposes, see, this is deliberate rebellion against God. This is, comes out of a, a sinful heart. And these are, this is not the only manifestation of sin. And this won't send you to hell any quicker than any other sin. But it's, it's so perverse because it, it has an uh, ability to corrupt and spread. And when government endorses it, empowers it, and works, puts the power of government behind spreading perversion, America has gone beyond Sodom and Gomorrah. And America will experience the same end as Sodom and Gomorrah. God will send fire on Babylon the Great, the great city. America, the biblical word polis, is the word you'd use to describe America. Just like Rome. Rome was more than a city. It was an empire. America is not a nation, an ethnos. It is an empire. Like Rome. I can remember after the Soviet Union fell, they were talking about America the uncontested superpower, lone superpower, as the new Rome. Well, the Bible talks about Babylon the Great. And it sounds an awful lot like the United States. You might want to read that section of the book of Revelation. America. Why would God 
send fire on, on, on Babylon, on America, assuming Babylon the Great is America, perhaps because they've gone beyond Sodom and Gomorrah. 